Hey, how's it going everyone? Tricky Acid here and welcome back to another video. And today we've got something a bit different. It's all about the latest 3000 series of RTX graphics cards from Nvidia. These have been teased and long awaited all year round and finally on September 1st, we got our first look at the next generation of GPUs. And in this video, I'm going to give you a brief rundown on the RTX 3070, 3080 and 3090 as well as give you all the heads up if it's worth upgrading or not depending on your current setup as well as which one would be best suited for your needs but before we get started as always drop a like and if you're new hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos with that said let's jump right in Okay, so to put it bluntly, if you're a PC gaming enthusiast looking for an upgrade or are looking to build a new rig and want the latest and greatest in graphical performance and are wondering if you should grab a 3000 series GPU, well, the short answer is yes. But before you get carried away and end up trying to sell your kidney and splash out your wallet so you can be on top of the mountain of the PC Master Race, let's go through all three cards. First off, Nvidia have blown me away with their new second generation RTX Ampere graphics cards with their huge leap in performance from 8GB of GDDR6 graphical memory all the way to a massive 24 gigs of G6X memory. They have completely outdone themselves here by exceeding a lot of people's expectations by also introducing support for PCI Express 4, pumping them up with extra CUDA cores, with over a 50% increase with the 3080 and 3090 across the entire previous 2000 series of RTX cards, and they also have a neat feature known as direct storage support. Like the upcoming PlayStation 5 that has a unique NVMe style SSD, which can decompress data directly from the SSD, which in return gives insanely fast loading times and where textures or models can be loaded up instantaneously and we got to see this during the Unreal Engine 5 demo that was running on the PS5 all in real time. It was super impressive stuff. And the RTX 3000 series will be capable of doing just that. Loading assets and just load times in general are very CPU intensive and that creates a bottleneck because you can have the fastest M.2 SSD in your PC but they make very little difference when it comes to gaming since unloading huge assets still gets sent to the CPU. But the RTX 3000 series, just like the PS5, will decompress data directly from the SSD, totally skipping the CPU using direct storage, meaning your processor can take it easy, while your Nvidia 3000 series will take care of that huge bulk of game assets and you'll see your game run with lightning fast load times. And this is great because even though games like Cyberpunk 2077 will take advantage of ray tracing, the point is AAA games are going to get bigger and bigger and these huge assets will take longer to load. So within a couple years, this will end up becoming the standard and direct storage support is going to be one of the biggest factors for upcoming titles and it's all thanks to the new Ampere lineup and it gets even better and that is the price. Starting with the RTA 3070, which is priced under £500, Nvidia is claiming that is better than the current reigning champ, the RTX 2080 Ti, which is a graphics card that is worth over £1,000. So it's mind blowing to see the performance you can get for half the price. It will have 8 gigs of G6 memory with nearly 6,000 CUDA cores. And I think this is a card a lot of PC gamers will invest in since it's such a steal compared to the previous gen, especially when it's being touted as faster than the 2080 Ti. But until I see real world tests, I'm still going to take things with a pinch of salt because I would like to see how much of a difference it really is. But nonetheless, for that price, you're in for a bargain of a deal. So if you're looking for an upgrade and want to avoid spending over £500, the 3070 is the ideal purchase for you and it'll be perfect for both gaming and streaming. Next is the RTX 3080 which is being booked as the fastest gaming GPU. This is targeted as the flagship graphics card for gamers which boasts 10 gigs of G6X memory which is the next generation of GDDR6 
is two times more powerful than the RTX 2080 as well. However, it consumes 320 watts. So it's definitely power hungry, but it is a beast of a graphics card. So I'm not surprised. I mean, just look at the frame rates on Doom Eternal. It's just tearing straight through this game to give you the best gaming experience. And I feel like the 3080 will be the sweet spot for any hardcore PC gamer. It's priced at £649, but if the PC is your main tool of destruction and you can stretch your budget, then the 3080 is worth every penny. And finally, we have a card that I do not recommend just for gaming, but I get it, a lot of people out there want the best of the best and where no amount of money is going to stop them. And it is pretty freaking awesome. It's the new flagship, the NVIDIA RTX 3090, which is being marketed as the BF GPU. NVIDIA claims it stands for Big Ferocious Graphics Card. I call bullshit because I think it stands for Big Fuck GPU because it's going to obliterate everything, including your wallet, just like this. And that is what you call overkill. Standing at over 30 centimeters in length, and taking up three slots with over 24 gigs of G6X memory, it's a monster of a graphics card. And it is the first 8K GPU that supports 60 FPS, hence the sheer size of this unit. And it supports 8K screen capture using Nvidia Shadowplay as well. And it's basically the replacement of the Titan RTX, which was a card that cost nearly two and a half thousand pounds and it was in very limited quantities. So Nvidia removed the Titan branding and named this the 3090 and priced it just above what you'd have paid for the RTX 2080 Ti, making it far more consumer friendly. And as great as all that may sound for gamers, I don't think you'll notice a massive difference compared to the 3080, because due to the huge amount of VRAM and the speed, this card is better utilized for people who do more than just game on their PC. If you're a person who, besides gaming, also is a professional content creator, using highly intensive programs for video production, 3D modeling, games development, AutoCAD, or anything else in the professional field, then the 3090 is built for you. But if you're looking primarily for gaming, I would suggest sticking with a 3070 or a 3080. In regards to cooling, both the 3080 and 3090 have a unique cooling solution. They take in cool air from the front fans, which flows through the car and then back out of the chassis. This is pretty cool and I like the design, but unless you have water cooling or an AIO for your CPU cooler, you might be causing an issue for your CPU because it's shooting hot air directly into the fan. So RIP fan coolers, whereas the 3070 has more of a traditional cooling system like in previous cards. With that said, that sums up this video. Hopefully this brings greater clarity of all three GPUs and which one may be best for you as well. If you enjoyed the video, please give a like as it really helps me out and let me know what card you're interested in and I'll catch you all next time.